Now then, now then, boys and girls, I've had an email from a young man who says, Dear Phil, please can you fix it for me to have a little crash course sneaky peek introduction to InDesign, that wonderful piece of software from Adobe, which will let you, hang on, wait a second, I'm still in his third person voice, which will let us produce fantastic looking portfolio pages, of course, of course, more than happy to show the introductory secrets to how to set up a page in InDesign and start putting artwork and bits and pieces onto your page. So that's what we're going to do. Normally, when I go into my Photoshop sessions, I've already got the document open. But in InDesign, part of the battle, I guess, is um, in setting the page up. So I'm going to walk through that first and hopefully you guys will get an idea of how I suggest proceeding with your document. So easy peasy, all you need to do in InDesign is to go to New Document. And I'm going to go through and set up a load of stuff here in this new document window that will um, allow us to make our portfolio pages. I'm not going to make a portfolio page, I'm just going to put um, some holiday snaps down so you guys can just get an idea of how to lay stuff out. We'll be going through in the um, sessions at the uni exactly how to put this stuff together, but I'm going to introduce a few ideas now. So first of all, we make sure that you want to set it to print for intent and switch facing pages off, unless you're specifically making a book or a magazine that you don't want to have facing pages set up. I'm going to switch to A3 because that's kind of the size that you want to be making your portfolio pages at. I'm going to switch it over to landscape for the orientation. Now, columns. I'm going to set the number of columns to 12. Wait, not 121. What? 12. And I'm going to set the gutter to 5 mil. Okay, 5 mil is going to be an important number for this document. 5 mil is going to be my sort of gap between everything. And we'll come to why I'm doing 12 columns in a minute. I'm not literally going to have 12 columns of text. You'll see, okay, trust me, trust me. Margins, I'm going to set to, um, say, 15 mil, which is a multiple of 5 mil. Everything's working around this 5 millimeter gap space. So here we go, I'm just going to hit OK. Boom! Super slow boom. Wow, that was the longest boom ever. Here's the document. And here are the 12 columns, the much vaunted 12 columns, which we're going to be using for our layout. Um, in the sessions later, we're going to be talking about how to use master pages. I think maybe that's for the second session. We're just going to be making a warm page for today, just so that we can all get our heads around exactly how this is going to all function. Okay, so we're just working on that single page. So we've got this document here. And like I said, 12 columns with a five mil gap between them. I'm gonna try and keep this five mil gap as this um, consistent spacing throughout this document. The way that I'm gonna make sure that everything can easily be accessed by using this five mil spacing, I'm gonna press Command K or Control K on your PC devices, which brings up in any um, piece of Adobe Suite software, preferences. And I'm looking specifically for this units and in increments. So it's set to millimeters for the ruler units and for the cursor key, I'm going to set it to 0.5 millimeters. Now, what the cursor key does is essentially, if I was to draw a shape onto the artboard, if I move this shape around using the cursors on the keyboard, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner the cursors that I'm clicking away my on. Now, each time I press one of those cursor keys, cursor movements move it by 0.5 millimeter increments, but I said I wanted a five millimeter increment. So if I hold down shift and use the cursor, each movement is exactly five mil because it multiplies what the um, cursor increment is by 10, 0.5 mil. So we still get that very precise movement up and down, five mil. Okay, so now we've got this super precise way of um, making sure that everything's okay. I'll explain a bit about what we've done with this grid. These lines here are actually just um, guidelines to help doing the layout. And the reason that we've got 12 is because it makes it very easy to break up the page. So if I wanna have, say, two separate sections on the page, it's easy to break up by looking using 
six columns. If I wanted to have three, all I do is make a uh, four column block. If I wanted to have four, I make a three column block. So I can have my four columns. If I wanted to have six, I use a two column block. And obviously these are all easily accessible just by using the horizontal grid. And now the reasoning behind using this um, increment that I mentioned is, I say for example, if I line the top of this block up with the bottom of those blocks there, it's sort of automatically snap. If I press shift and down, I've now got a five mil gap. So that's what's great, in my opinion, about using this um, this layout method. Is that you've always got access to this um, super accurate grid layout. So if I press W, what W does is it gives me a sort of print preview and it removes all of the guidelines and everything from the outline. So I can see that now I've got this super precise layout. Not this isn't the actual layout I'm going to use, oh god no. Um, but that's the reasoning behind using that uh, spacing. So let's start putting some stuff down, I guess. I'm going to click on the T button. And when you're using InDesign, you're always putting everything in boxes. InDesign is basically a box program for moving boxes around and you get to pick what you put in those boxes. You can either put some text in the box, so you can put just a color in the box, you can put a picture in the box, and then you can move those boxes around. And that's InDesign, it's a box program. So I'm just gonna put a box up at the top, click and drag. And because I clicked on T, this is gonna be a text box. So I'm gonna put the title of my page up here. And click Control T. Obviously should make the uh, character box up here. Oh, here we go, down here. And now I'm just going to pick a text. Um, I'm just going to pick a font that I want. I love using Nexa. It's one of my favorite fonts. And what's cool about the layout that we've got that like, we're using now is I can make sure that everything sort of fits together in exactly the right way. It's always going to be super consistent. So now I know that this corner here is exactly 15 mil from the edge, and that this sort of baseline of these two is exactly right. Cool. So what I'm going to do is just actually pop these two inside a uh, box and I'm going to fill that box with black just for now and I'm going to send it to the back, arrange, send to backwards, control shift, square button. Now I want this um, to be 5mm here and I'm going to make these white. So I'm going to get the color tool just here. When you're working on colors, I've got these text boxes selected. You notice that um, it looks like there's no fill and no stroke here. And that's because I've got the box selected, formatting effects container. I want this one here, click T. And now it gives me this slider, which says what the font style color is going to be. 
So now we've got this nice tidy layout just here and a, a, a sort of slick spacing between everything. So now I'm going to put some pictures in. This button here, Rectangle Frame Tool, will let me put a box in like this. The X means that this is a picture box that does not contain anything. So you can either go to Place from the file or Command D, Control D on your PC, and it will give you the option to pick a photo from your library and I'm going to be using some photographs of Tsukiji Fish Market in Tokyo, which is a, a place that I've been, um, mainly so that I don't have to worry about the copyright on these photos. So what it happens is it puts the photograph inside the box. The way this works is that the, the, each of these boxes is sort of contains two separate pieces. There's the box itself, which is this piece around the outside, which I can adjust, and you'll notice that it actually doesn't adjust the contents or if I wanted to move the image around, I click on this in the center, and I can move the image around without it changing the frame. So I've made this join up exactly with the top here. I wanted to, I could just pop the gap in just there so that we can retain the grid spacing. I'm also going to pick a colour off this image to use as the fill for this top bar just here. Correction, make sure that you've got the fill selected as you do this. Click I on the keyboard to get the eyedropper tool up. This is a nice way of working. Sometimes you'll be able to make sure that the colours that you're using in your layout are 100% consistent with the imagery that you use. So I'm going to put a couple more pictures just here into some square boxes. So make sure those are there. Click on this one, Command D. Control D on your PC. There we go, this guy slicing up a tuna fish. And again, I don't need to move the picture box around, but I want to move the picture around within it. And he's cut very tightly there, very tight crop. So I can reduce the size of the picture so that you can see a little bit more of the information. Nice, control D, I'll drop another picture in here. So now we've got a very, very tight layout here. If I wanted to put a nice big block of text in just here. And because I actually don't have any text set up for this, I'm just going to click on this fill with placeholder text. And so now we've got this sort of fake Latin, which is quite a common feature of design work like this. I'm just going to make sure that I've got the 50, uh, the 5 mil gap in at the top there. And again, I'm just going to pick a slightly different font. I love me some Nexa. Increasing the leading. And I'm picking a oh, 5 mil. why not? I'm picking a, an alignment that emphasizes the grid that we've got. And a 
think I'm just going to stick one more picture down here in the corner. Ah, there we go. So it's kind of the essence of doing page layout in InDesign is it's not really very difficult and um, if you follow along with my suggestions on how to get the sort of best say spacing and the grid mechanism that I'm going to describe you'll be able to very quickly get a very precise and very tidy layouts. So I'm not going to labour the point, I've gone through a whole load of stuff, all I can recommend is that you spend a little bit of time mucking about with InDesign and seeing whether you can build your own pages. We're going to be going through the um, finer points of InDesign on Friday and uh, in a later session and probably in a later video we'll talk about how to do export and uh, the like to make sure that you are getting the best out of your printers. But until then, um, I hope you guys get a chance to play with InDesign and I'll see you soon. Bye bye!